going on, Jerome? So Paul Allen, PA on the mic, voice of the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, as well as host on KFAN 9 to noon. Uh, of course, uh, goes way back like chiropractic with Florio. That's not a thermos. Uh, and PA had Quasi, general manager of the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, on this morning. Uh, talk about some of the offseason moves and developments that have been going on as the Vikings. I mean, like like we said, this has been the most transformative offseason of Vikings franchise history. Daniil, pillar of the defense for a, a decade almost. He gone. Kirk Cousins, he gone. Uh, as well as the Vikings making a move and uh, trading up to 23 uh, on Friday, having two first-round picks, potentially moving up in stratosphere, getting their quarterback of the future. A lot of things going on right now. Uh, so this is what PA uh, talked with Kwesi about. Uh, Kevin Seifert, ESPN, who is not. Carl Gerbschmidt. Uh, Kwesi Dofamensa on uh, to PA on the mic on KFAN. Uh, uh, I was wondering what does RE stand for? Like re? I, I know it means in regarding to. Oh, maybe that's it. Regarding. <laughs> I'm, I'm a genius. Uh, Friday's trade to acquire the number 23 pick. We just thought that move get, gave us uh, the best of flexibility for whatever can happen. He added, I would say at this point there is a preferred scenario, but the process is ongoing. And that's exactly it. Where you know, we said... The Vikings have ultimate flexibility in this spot. And hell, the trade up 23 uh, might might be a deal that the Vikings would have wanted to do anyway, even absent the specter of trading up. Now, I, I do think that Quasey probably has had conversations and maybe even has deals in his back pocket uh, trading up into the top five, picks two through five, because uh, Bears ain't trading one uh, anymore. But if the Vikings are... You know, can't get the right value, or the board doesn't break the right way, or their guy isn't there. I think the Vikings can still just stick and pick at 11 23, or it's a spot where maybe the Vikings trade down from 11 and still get their quarterback of the future at 23. Uh, maybe they uh, move down in the first round, maybe they get, get a suite of second round picks. Who knows? Or the Vikings can. Uh, 11 is a really valuable spot because there's going to be run on quarterbacks. There's going to be a run of wide receivers. There's going to be run on offensive tackles. So the Vikings may have their choice of edge rushers, cornerbacks, uh, defensive linemen. So. They may have it made at 11. And 23, even though you do have to get through the Broncos at 12, the Raiders at 13, the maybe even hell, maybe even the Rams at 19, and also the Steelers at 20, uh, I still think that Penix, Knicks, uh, you know, could be there at, at 23. I mean, this is a deep quarterback class. So uh, I understand what Kwesi's saying there because they do have flexibility. They, they don't have to trade up if they don't want to, if they don't see the right value, but also they have, they have the ammunition and are perfectly situated if they want to. So it's a great move by Kwesi in this spot. Uh, Purple Persuasion, Kwesi with PA on the vision going forward. There's a vision for what this team can play like. It's not one size fits all. So I, I think that does go back to what type of quarterback the Vikings could potentially get. Is it going to be May? Is it going to be Daniels? Is it going to be J.J. McCarthy? Is it going to be Penix? Is it going to be Knicks? As well as defensively, I think Flores wants to do a lot of fun things defensively. Plus, for the Vikings, like maybe they, they've gotten a little bit too pass happy over the last couple of years. Maybe having some balance uh, would make some sense. I mean, maybe that's why they brought in Aaron Jones. Uh, also, speaking of Aaron Jones, uh, Pro Persuasion, uh, the second he became available, he became the best option. You know, Kwesi when picking up Aaron Jones, where Aaron Jones still has some left in the tank. And this is a different situation. Like I understand that this he's heading to his year twenty, uh, his year thirty season, uh, and the Vikings uh, part of ways with Dalvin on his year twenty eight season. But Dalvin's been beat up. I mean, Dalvin had health issues uh, his entire time with the Vikings, as well as uh, going back to Florida State. Aaron Jones has relatively low mileage. I mean, yes, uh, he did have that hamstring issue last year, but. He's never truly been an RB1 in the NFL, so he hasn't taken on that that punishment of 400-plus touches a season. So, I mean, even though he's 29, that's relatively fresh 29. Uh, and also, it doesn't change our excitement for Ty Chandler. And like, like I said, uh, Aaron Jones has never been a true RB1 in the league. He split time with Jamal Williams uh, when he initially got to Green Bay. He split Ty Montgomery was in that mix, too. Also, he spent time, uh, time with A.J. Dillon uh, towards the end uh, with the Packers. So I, I don't think he automatically just becomes RB1 now uh, at age in his age tw uh, 30 season. And Ty Chandler, Ty Chandler showed a lot last year, man. Uh, and if he sutures up his pass protection, uh, he could become a true three-down running back. I'm really excited about the Vikings' backfield as of right now. And uh, like we said, th this could be a part of the one-size uh, – it's not one-size-fits-all. I mean, the Vikings, if they need to uh, become a running team in some certain games, uh, they certainly can do that. Also, especially since you got Josh Oliver, the best blocking tight end in the game in the mix. Uh, with the offensive line, 
Bucks fan page, Quasi and Dalton Reisner. Uh, we look for best available. Every option is on the table. That's all I can say about that. And Reisner has been very public uh, on Twitter, you know, basically just campaigning to try and come back to the Vikings, saying he doesn't want to break the bank. He, he just wants a starting guard contract, whatever that is at this point. Where I would like Reisner back. I, I I'm not going to pay like seven, eight, nine million per season uh, for him at, at this point. I would say like. Honestly, if it's a like a three-year, fifteen million dollar deal, sort of like what the Vikings gave Bradbury last off season, fine. You know, sign him up right, right meow. And also with Brandon uh, persuasion, uh, he's somebody that we in watching film uh, loved his versatility uh, on Blake Brandon. Why, why do you have to watch film? You see him every day in practice. Hmm. We're talking about practice, but yeah, Brandle's versatility does give the Vikings a lot of flexibility uh, because I think at minimum Brandle is a high-end backup, working uh, backup for spots. And if they don't run it back with Reisner, I mean, maybe Brandle uh, just uh, slots into that left guard spot. It's a possibility, but I, I would be fine bringing back Reisner. Also, the fact that Reisner, uh, since he's an in-house guy, doesn't factor into the comp uh, pick formula. Uh, go ahead and do it. Also, signs Xavier Howard, you cowards. Hmm. Uh, and lastly. Uh, Bucks fan page. Uh, Quasi on Brian Flores' respect for Andrew Van Ginkle. Uh, quote, Brian has been talking about him since he got here. Uh, Flo knew he had it in him and always believed in him. And Van Ginkle did have a, a bust-out season uh, last year with the Dolphins. And, yeah, I mean, Van Ginkle was brought in as a fifth-round pick out of Wisconsin during the Flores' tenure, and he saw the potential there. And Van Ginkle, not only can he rush the passer, he feels well against the run. He can play a little bit of off-ball linebacker. He's solid in coverage, too. And I think that just that versatility uh, is going to play very well uh, in the Flores defense. So I'm I'm really hyped and amped up, and I'm glad that Flores, you know, last off season Flores just got here. Maybe he didn't have as much say uh, in the personnel moves as you know, a lot of people saw him as a one and done. But now with the reality that Flores may be here long term, I mean Flores uh, really taking the reins on defense and free agency, and especially the draft. I mean that defense is going to be great. Uh, again, respect to what the scouting department and Quasi bring to the table, but. Flores, um, Flores has four years of scouting experience as well. That's he got to start uh, in the Patriots uh, organization as a scout uh, before getting into the coaching side. So he knows what he wants and he knows how to evaluate. So uh, very exciting times moving forward. But uh, that's it. Uh, Vikings uh, general manager Quasi Dofamensa on with PA on the mic nine to noon on K Fan talking about the off season. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and their thoughts in the comment section below. You guys know what to do. Skull production value. <laughs>